No, sir, I have no experience, but I'm a big fan of money. I like it. I use it. I have a little. I keep it in a jar on the top of my refrigerator. I'd like to put more in that jar. That's where you come in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 103 of Movies Are Awesome, the show all about beachcombing. My name is Nathan Pottle, and thank you so much for joining me today. The first thing I want to say is, how did you like that new intro music that I got there? A friend of mine, Nick, who I work with, he's a musician, and he plays guitar and all these other things, and he came up with this musical riff for me, and I really like it. I think it's great. I... I'm so excited to include it in the episode and have it in subsequent episodes, so thank you very much, Nick, for making that up for me. I've included his Instagram in the show notes below, so if you want to check out the stuff that he does, all of his music stuff and anything else of his, go and check it out. I think that would be really awesome of you to do so. So thank you, Nick. New music. I'm really excited. I've wanted to get new music for the show for a long time, and now I finally do. So here we go. But that's not the only exciting thing about today's episode. I've wanted to do today's topic for a really long time. And the only reason I haven't done it already was because I just I hadn't been able to. Because I am talking about this 100 movies bucket list. If you follow the show on Instagram, I made a post on it earlier this week that I have completed this list. So there are a hundred different images here, and each one represents a movie, and it all came as silver when I first got it. So it was this scratch-off list. You watch the movie, and then you scratch it off. So my sister got me this list for Christmas in 2018, and one of her stipulations was that in order for me to scratch it off the list, I have to re-watch the movie. So if I'd already seen the movie, I had to re-watch it and then scratch it off the list. And I do believe I had seen like 85 of the movies on this list. And there were only like 15 or 20 that I had not seen. So I had to re-watch all of them. And I had really good momentum when I first started. Like I told myself, hey, I'm going to get this done in less than 200 days. 100 movies in less than 200 days. I'm going to blast through it. And in like the first four or five months, I had this list half done. Like I was blasting through it. I was, I had such good momentum going, and then I had changed jobs, and then we moved houses, and all these different things started happening, so my momentum on the list really, really slowed down, but then finally in the last about month and a half or so, I said, hey, I need to get this done. So I buckled down, and I started rewatching the movies and getting everything done, and now I'm finished, and I get to talk about it. So from December, not December, December is when I received the list, but I didn't start watching the movies until January 4th, 2019, and I watched the last movie on the list on May 2nd, 2021. Now, I did not watch them in the order that they are on on the list. I watched them in whatever order I felt like watching them at the time, so... If I wanted to watch a movie, I would see if it was on the list, and then I would watch it, and then I would scratch it off. Or I would check one out and say, like, hey, I actually don't even own this. Is it on a streaming service, or can I get it from the library? And that's how I watched most of these movies. If I didn't own them, try to get them on a streaming service or get them from the library, and that was very helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list off all of these movies. If you want to check out the post I made on Instagram, you can see the picture of the actual list itself and you can zoom in and you can see all the little pictures that they made for it. Some of them are really good and interesting. Some of them feel, you know, they could not as much effort was put into designing the little image, but I'm going to list them off. It it's technically not 100 movies. There are 106 movies on this list and that's because even though there are 100 squares, we have three sets of trilogies that were placed onto a single square. So it says 100 movies bucket list, but when you incorporate the three trilogies, it's actually 106. So I'm going to start listing them here. I'll list them in the order that they are on this list. And then I'm going to kind of break down things about this list that I really liked. I'm going to talk about movies that I had never seen before, but because of the list, I ended up really, really liking them. I'm going to talk about movies that I feel maybe shouldn't be on this list, what I would replace them with, 
and stuff like that. I have a lot to say about this movie list. For one, it's a really great idea. I think it's really fun. I had a great time watching the movie and then going to scratch it off and trying to figure out like, okay, what is the picture going to be? What is it going to look like? And on some of them, me and my wife would guess really, really closely. Some of them we would be not nowhere near close as to what this is going to be. So why don't I list them off and then we're going to talk about this more in depth. So we've got Gladiator, Leon the Professional, The Shining, The Departed, The Lord of the Rings Trilogy, The Shawshank Redemption, A Clockwork Orange, Jurassic Park, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Boys in the Hood, Snatch, Modern Times, The Machinist, Spirited Away, Titanic, Casablanca, Citizen Kane, Django Unchained, Memento, Old Boy, Amelie, Fight Club, Halloween, Mean Girls, The Deer Hunter, Dirty Dancing, The Great Dictator, Dr. Strangelove, Pulp Fiction, The Pianist, Seven Samurai, The Goonies, The Grand Budapest Hotel, On the Waterfront, The Truman Show, Forrest Gump, Casino Royale, The Big Lebowski, Stand By Me, Blade Runner, Whiplash, The Dark Knight Trilogy, The Original Star Wars Trilogy Episodes 4, 5, and 6, Drive, Reservoir Dogs, Good Will Hunting, Scarface, Shaun of the Dead, Raging Bull, Monty Python's Life of Brian. I am halfway through the list here. I, I'm just going to take a breather because I'm just reading them off one after another. So just give me two seconds to take a breath and I will continue on. <sighs> okay. American History X, Interstellar, From Russia with Love, The Lion King, Life is Beautiful, Groundhog Day, The Green Mile, American Psycho, Ghostbusters, 12 Angry Men, Saving Private Ryan, Vertigo, The Silence of the Lambs, Little Miss Sunshine, Moonlight, The Notebook, Inception, Back to the Future, Jaws, Apocalypse Now, Alien, Three Idiots, The Godfather, Rosemary's Baby, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, The Rocky Horror Picture Show, No Country for Old Men, Schindler's List, Seven, The Intouchables, Airplane, City of God, Brokeback Mountain, E.T., Her, The Terminator, Rocky, The Matrix, Up, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Wally, Office Space, Source Code, The Big Short, Toy Story, In Bruges, Psycho, The Usual Suspects, Braveheart, and The Prestige. So those are the 100 movies, or 106 movies, that are on this list. I've watched them all, I have seen every single movie on that list, and now that I've watched it, I have the esteemed privilege of getting to talk about this list in depth. We're gonna really dive in here, and that was kind of a long process, I'm sorry, but it's just something that I had to get through in order to now talk about it. So what I want to say first is what I really liked about this list. First off, I really liked the experience, like I mentioned before, getting to watch the movie and then getting to scratch it off the list. I really liked that aspect. I know there are versions of this as well that are for books, and so you read a book and then you scratch it off the list, or there are travel maps. You can get a map of the world in every country that you've been to. You can scratch it off the list. So there are things like this that exist for other genres, and I think it's a really cool gift idea. Like, this was given to me as a gift, or if you know someone who likes to travel a lot, get them the one that's of the world, or if someone really likes to read, get them the one of the 100 list of books. Like, there's a lot of different options and things for this, so I like the experience, I like the layout, I do not understand the order that these movies are in, they seem to be completely random, there's no discernible order to how these movies are laid out on the list. It's not by movie title, it's not by release year, it's not by director, I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but it's in some kind of random order, and I, I like the aesthetic of looking at this. I'm gonna have this hanging up in my office so that I can continue to look at it and fondly remember scratching everything else off of this list. So the the experience is something that I really liked. Also, there are some movies on here that I really liked. And I want to talk specifically about movies that I had never seen and either had never heard of or 
had meant to watch but never got around to that I ended up really, really liking. So I've got how many? Two, four? I got six movies on this list that really struck me and I keep thinking about them and I want to buy them and get them as part of my collection because these these are movies that just really impressed me. So let me talk about them right now. I've, I'll just list them right now. We've got Modern Times, The Great Dictator, Drive, Life is Beautiful, 12 Angry Men, and City of God. All of these movies were really great. I'm going to talk about them individually just a little bit. Modern Times is a Charlie Chaplin movie. I can't remember the exact year, and I didn't write it down just because there are so many individual movies that I'm talking about today that I didn't want to go through and look up every single individual year. So Modern Times came out sometime in the 30s, and it's a story of Charlie Chaplin working in a factory and having misadventures and wanting more out of life, and it's really funny and really topical, and it's a silent film, so everything is told to us visually. I love visual storytelling because, as I say often on the show, movies are a visual medium, and I want to be shown things and not told things, so Modern Times is something that I feel really, really holds up, especially for a movie that you know has got to be close to 90 years old, if not 90 years old already. And it just, I feel it's one that really holds up. It's one that I need to have in my collection. Modern Times was an excellent movie. The next one here, The Great Dictator, is also a Charlie Chaplin film. And I've actually talked about both of these on the show before. About a year ago, I made a, my own 100 movie list, the ultimate movie buff must watch list or whatever I titled it, something along those lines. But I did four episodes where I talked about 25 movies each and I had a big list of 100 movies and both of these movies were on there because I think they're both landmark groundbreaking movies. And The Great Dictator was great because it was speaking out against Hitler and Nazi Germany while it was happening. This movie came out in 1940, which is during World War II. Now, the United States hadn't joined the war yet, but it was certainly happening at that point. So Charlie Chaplin making a movie like this, it was a very bold move indeed. It was also his first talkie, so he's speaking and you get to actually hear his voice. So that's really interesting. So The Great Dictator is another one that I just really enjoyed and I keep thinking about it. It's fantastic. Another one is Drive. Drive, I think, is great. It's, it's another one of those... There's not a ton of dialogue in this movie. It stars Ryan Gosling, and he plays a getaway driver, and he falls in love with this woman, and they have a little romance. It's like Baby Driver, but not quite as stylish. But this movie is beautiful in its own way. It has some really iconic imagery, and Ryan Gosling is one of my favorite actors. I think that he really is kind of underrated in that sense. He doesn't have that prestige that some other actors do, but I think he absolutely has the talent that some of these other big-name actors really do. So Ryan Gosling, I think, is really great in Drive, and I would recommend checking it out if you haven't seen it. The next one that I had mentioned is an Italian film. It is called Life is Beautiful, and of all the movies on this list, this one is the one that me and my wife were both just taken by and blown away. I had heard of it before, and had never had the opportunity to see it, but then because of the list, we got it, and we watched it, and man, is this movie something else, and it, it's a very special movie. What Life is Beautiful is about, it's about these uh, Jewish Italians in World War II, and this man and his son get taken into a concentration camp, and they are just trying to make the best of it, and this man is all about showing his son that life is beautiful and not letting them fall into despair. And even though they're in a concentration camp, he's trying to make life as tolerable for his son as possible. And it is heartwarming and it's funny and it's tragic and it's just a magnificent, magnificent film. It is in Italian, so you need the subtitles unless you know the language, but it's a really powerful film. Of all the ones on this list, it's probably the one that has stuck with me the most, having seen it for the first time because of this list. The next one that I have is 12 Angry Men. 12 Angry Men is another one that really stuck with me, and I've thought about it for a long time. 
I need to have it in my collection, and I need to watch it again and again. It's a movie that takes place entirely in one room, and it's just these 12 jurors having a conversation, and it's so interesting and engaging that the characters don't even have names, and it doesn't even matter. They're all just referred to as juror 1, 2, 3, 4, up until number 12, and they just have numbers, and they all have individual personalities, and they all have opinions, and they're talking about this court case and trying to determine whether they have enough information to make either a guilty or not guilty verdict, and it's just fascinating. I do believe it's based off of a stage play. I can't remember 100% or not, though, but 12 Angry Men, it's so, so good, and there are different versions of 12 Angry Men, so if you're going to go watch it, you want to watch the one that's directed by Cindy Lumet, and it stars Henry Fonda, I think is the actor's name, but that's the one that you want to watch, the black and white one, it, like, I just found it so engaging and so fascinating. It, it's a magnificent, magnificent film. And then the last one of the new movies that I had not seen but watched because of the list is City of God. This is a Brazilian movie about two young boys who grow up kind of in the slums and how just making different changes, they have completely different lives. And one of them wants to be the biggest, baddest gangster in uh, Rio, it, it takes place in, which is just why it's called City of God, it takes place in Rio, and another one wants to be a photographer. So just, like, they both have goals in their lives, and they they know each other, I don't know exactly if they're friends, but their lives are kind of intertwined, and as they're growing up, the different decisions that they're making, and the lives that they are living, greatly change who they become as adults, and this is a movie that's really... Like, it doesn't shy away from things. Like, we witness some horrifying things in City of God. You know, like, young boys killing each other, shooting each other with guns while laughing. It's a very powerful film. It's a beautifully shot film. The cinematography of City of God is magnificent. I would recommend watching it just on that alone. But the story is there. Once again, this movie's not in English, so no going in. You're going to have to have subtitles. And I know that that really bothers some people, but if you give these movies a chance, you can understand just other cultures can make really great films. And that's one thing that I appreciate about this list is that it does include some foreign films on here. So City of God is a Brazilian movie. Life is Beautiful is from Italy. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly is kind of North American, kind of not, but that I we just won't include it. Uh, Amelie is French. The Untouchables is also a French film. Seven Samurai and Spirited Away are both Japanese movies, so we have a little bit of international flavor and representation on this list. I like that a lot, especially the movies that they picked are ones that really showcase what these other nations have to offer from their film industry. So those movies are all really great and I recommend watching those six, and I have some other ones that I don't recommend watching, but I'm going to get to those in a little bit. What I want to talk about is some of the things that I noticed on this list, and that make me question why some of the decisions were made. So the top three directors that we see appear on the list is Stanley Kubrick, Steven Spielberg, and Christopher Nolan. And even then, Stanley Kubrick, we only have four films of his on this list. Uh, what are they? I didn't write them down. We've got 2001 A Space Odyssey, A Clockwork Orange, The Shining, and another one. I don't remember. Steven Spielberg, we have six movies of his. And then Christopher Nolan makes the highest appearance on the list. We have seven of his movies. Actually, at the time that this list was released, it's almost every single Christopher Nolan movie that was out at the time, with the exception of Insomnia. Insomnia is the only Nolan movie not on this list, and I'm, I have a, I have a very sinking feeling that if this list came out post Dunkirk and Tenet, that both of them would be on this list as well. For some reason, there's just a lot of Christopher Nolan on here, and I'm not 100% sure why, because I don't think that Memento really deserves a spot on the list. I definitely don't think Interstellar needs to be on this list, as well as the Dark Knight trilogy as a whole. Because while I like Batman Begins, I think it's fine. I don't think it's anything groundbreaking. 
and The Dark Knight Rises I don't think is very good at all. So what I would have preferred is maybe just have The Dark Knight. I don't think you need to see Batman Begins in order to understand The Dark Knight. I think you can watch it just as a movie on its own, even though it is part of a trilogy. I don't think the trilogy itself is strong enough to justify its own spot on the list, especially when we have Back to the Future on the list, and it was just Back to the Future, not the entire trilogy. So if they could do it with Back to the Future, I feel like they could have done it with the Dark Knight trilogy and include just the Dark Knight. And then if you would have removed Batman Begins and remove The Dark Knight Rises and remove Interstellar and remove Memento, that's four Christopher Nolan movies that you've removed that can then make space for something else. Because there's a lot that this list is lacking. There is not a lot of animation on this list. There are only four animated movies on here. We have Up, Toy Story, The Lion King, Spirited Away. Uh, oh, no, there's five. Also, Wally is on this list. So we have five animated movies out of 106. I feel like that's a little low. Could have used a few more. Like, it do doesn't need to be a ton. Like, even though I love animation, I don't think half of the list needs to be animated films. So, but even a few more, I think, would have just helped out a little bit. I think I would have felt a little bit better if we had just a couple more animated films on here. So... We didn't have that much animation, we had a lot of Christopher Nolan, and we had a lot of movies that after I watched them, I just said, why? Or even if I had seen the movie before and I saw it on the list, I say, why? Why is this movie on here? And I have those movies written down here. So here are my whys. I just don't understand what the justification was to include them on this list. I don't know who made this list. I don't know what company this is from. There's no kind of discernible sign there's no website there's no contact number i just it just says 100 movies bucket list scratch off poster and then at the bottom it says we picked 100 essential movies that you must watch in your life from the matrix to modern times we've crafted a list of both classic and blockbuster movies to either discover or enjoy again now the word essential here is the one that gets me because there are some movies on this list that i don't think are essential at all and those are the ones that I wrote down here so why don't I list those off old boy is one that I don't think you need to have seen in your life raging bull is another one Monty Python's life of Brian interstellar as I've already said from Russia with love American psycho rosemary's baby the rocky horror picture show office space source code in Bruges Shaun of the dead and airplane now that's just a few there are a few others on this list that I don't think quite could be on here, but if I were going to do a huge in-depth critique of this list, I would just be sitting here all day talking about each movie and what I could replace it with. So I just have these, I think it's 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. I have 13 here that I thought for sure don't need to be on this list, and then I came up with replacements for them, and I tried with my replacements to either get something similar but better, or try to fill in a gap that this list is sorely lacking of. Like, for example, it is missing animated movies, as I mentioned. Also, there are almost no musicals on here, and I think that because musicals were such an important part of Hollywood back in the 50s and 60s, and then even coming into the 1970s, I think that that's something that needed to be included a little bit more, so I've included some musicals, and I've included some more landmark films in order to just help make this list a little more robust and a little more wide-reaching. I see that they did try to include some comedies, and they tried to include some horror films and action movies and some classics, but when it comes to the classics, we didn't get any musicals. Nothing like that. No classic animated films. Either the oldest animated movie on here I do believe is The Lion King. I think Spirited Away came out late 90s, and The Lion King was either 94 or 95. So the latest animated movies that we get are from the 90s, even though there are a lot of classic ones, like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, I feel probably needs a spot on this list, but I didn't include it in my replacements here. I just wanted to mention it because I think it's really great, and it probably deserves a spot on the list, but I can't include all the movies, right? So... I'm going to go through and talk about my replacements for these 13 movies that I just listed and just kind of say why I think that and let you know 
how this movie list could have been a little bit better, you know? So the first one I had is Old Boy. Now, Old Boy is a movie, I do believe it's a Korean film, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure, though. It's a Korean film. It's a movie about this guy who was imprisoned in this apartment building type thing, and then he was released, and he doesn't know why he was imprisoned, and he spends the entire movie trying to figure out this mystery and just put his life back together, and there's plot twists and turns, and there's a lot of really crazy action, and I thought it was fine. I found the story to be quite dark and disturbing, and it, that's not something that is really a deterrent for me, because Seven is on this list, and that's one of the darkest films I've ever seen. I actually, Seven was one of the last ones I watched before finishing the list up, just because I know how dark it is, and I didn't want to rewatch it. So, Old Boy is one of those ones that I felt... I don't think it's completely essential. I think that if I had never seen it, I would have been just fine. But there are other movies on this list that are way more monumental. So the replacement that I came up with for Old Boy is an anime film called Your Name. Um, just to give anime a little more representation on the list. Also, it's an excellent film. It has big plot twists as well, It's also, but it's not a dark film. It's highly enjoyable. It's really high quality. It's probably my favorite anime film that I've ever seen, even though Spirited Away is probably a close second, but it's already on the list. So your name is going to replace Old Boy if, if I were to remake this list. The next one, Raging Bull. It's a boxing movie with Robert De Niro and directed by Martin Scorsese. Uh, we already have Rocky on the list, which is a better boxing movie than Raging Bull. I didn't really like it at all. I found that Robert De Niro's character was very unlikable as the hero of the story, and even though there are plenty of movies where the main character is unlikable, they're at least interesting, and I didn't find Robert De Niro's character to be interesting, and they're bouncing back and forth between time frames and all this different stuff, so I'm going to say get rid of Raging Bull and replace it with The Wizard of Oz. Why The Wizard of Oz isn't already on this list? I do not understand, because it's one of the most influential, it's one of the most pop culture centric, it's so ingrained in our society, it's such a landmark film. Why it wasn't included on the list originally, I do not know, but I'm going to include it in my replacement of Raging Bull. So The Wizard of Oz makes it onto the list for me. The next one is Monty Python's Life of Brian. Now, I didn't like this movie at all. I didn't think it was very good. I didn't think it was very funny. Monty Python humor just doesn't really jive with me. But if you were going to include a Monty Python movie, why would you choose Life of Brian instead of Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Even though I don't really like Monty Python and the Holy Grail, I think it's a better movie than Life of Brian. And I think it's more important, historically speaking, as far as comedic films go. So we're getting rid of Life of Brian and replacing it with Holy Grail. The next one, I've already said, I don't like Interstellar. A lot of people really love Interstellar. I do not. I don't think it's good. So we're getting rid of Interstellar and replacing it with La La Land, a modern musical that people can get behind and can watch and can be entertained by. It's got Ryan Gosling. It's got Emma Stone. It's directed by Damien Chazelle. It's a charming movie that should have won Best Picture, and it didn't. And five years later, I'm still upset about it, but whatever. The point is, La La Land is a better movie than Interstellar, and it fills a gap that this list sorely needs, so we're removing Interstellar and we're replacing it with La La Land. Next, From Russia With Love, is the second James Bond movie, and this is another one, like Life of Brian. Why did you choose From Russia With Love? If you're going to choose a James Bond movie, why not go with the original? Pick Dr. No. Dr. No is better than From Russia With Love, for one. It was the first James Bond movie, it's more of a landmark. So why would you pick From Russia With Love when Dr. No is the clear, obvious choice for James Bond movies? So we're getting rid of From Russia With Love, replace it with Dr. No, and this list is all the better for it. Next up, I've got American Psycho. Now, I have never understood why people like American Psycho. I don't find it interesting, I don't find it entertaining, I don't find it thought-provoking. It just... I just don't like it. There's just something about this movie that I really, really don't like. But, in the spirit of keeping a movie that keeps you guessing and 
has a suspenseful plot and leaves you wanting more, I'm going to replace American Psycho with Rear Window. Because I think Alfred Hitchcock does not have a huge representation on this list. He only has two movies. He had Psycho and Vertigo. But I think let's remove American Psycho and replace it with Rear Window. Let's get another Hitchcock movie in there. Something that has a lot of tension and suspense and holds up to this day, even though it came out, I believe, in 1954. You know, over 60 years later. I think it's a movie that really holds up and is really engaging and is just better than American Psycho. So we're replacing that one and we're moving on to Rosemary's Baby. Rosemary's Baby is directed by Roman Polanski, who has a surprising amount of movies on this list. He has two for sure, maybe three. Now, Roman Polanski, you may or may not know, has done some questionable things in his life. So let's get rid of Rosemary's Baby so that I don't have to think about the things that he's done, and we're going to replace it with another classic horror film, The Exorcist, which I think is a better movie than Rosemary's Baby. It's more interesting, it's scarier, and more of a landmark in the horror genre. So we're getting rid of Rosemary's Baby, replacing it with The Exorcist. The next one, this is a cult classic type film that a very niche audience really enjoys, and that's the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which I find just very weird and uncomfortable to watch. And it's, it's just, I don't know, it makes my skin crawl just thinking about it. I do not enjoy this movie, but it is like the only musical that's on this list. So I have to replace it with another musical. So why don't I replace it with something that is more of a landmark in filmmaking history, something that really just is all around better. So I'm replacing the Rocky Horror Picture Show with The Sound of Music. It was released in 1965. It stars Julie Andrews, and she is delightful. And it's a huge, sweeping musical. It's gloriously shot. It's beautiful to look at. It's wondrous to behold. And The Sound of Music is just a magnificent film that I think is more essential for people to watch than the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So we're getting rid of it and we're going to put The Sound of Music in its place. Now, while I respect that this movie adds comedies on the list in order to, you know, get a wide array of different genres in here, I don't think Office Space is good enough to merit a spot on this list. So why don't we get rid of Office Space, replace it with a more classic comedy like Some Like It Hot. If you're familiar with the show, there's no surprise that I love Some Like It Hot. It is my favorite comedy of all time. I think it's hilarious. I just love it so much. Every time I think about it, I'm chuckling to myself. It's got Jack Lemmon. It's got Tony Curtis. It's got Marilyn Monroe. And it is funnier than Office Space. Even though I like Office Space, I think it's I think it's a good comedy. I don't think it's good enough to be considered an essential watch. So we're going to take it off and put Some Like It Hot in there instead. Now, the next one is probably one of the biggest like disconnects of what the movie is and what I'm replacing it with, and that is Source Code. Source Code is a movie, it's it's kind of like a twisty, turny, mind-bendy type film uh, directed by Duncan Jones, and he likes to do those kind of things. Uh, his movie Moon is very similar to in that respect, but... With source code, like there's just nothing about it. Like I gotta keep that word essential in my mind when looking at these movies. If I had never seen source code, would I be okay? And I think yes. And really, if you we want to get super subjective, if you don't watch any movies ever, are you gonna be okay? Sure. But in my case, I just love the film industry, and if I want to take movie watching seriously, and I want to see as many things that I should and if i if i want to break it down to what's essential i got to remove source code and i got to replace it with something like ben hur and ben hur is this sprawling epic it has a huge scale to it it's a magnificent story it's got that incredible chariot race scene it's just a magnificent piece of filmmaking and not only that it does hold the record for most Academy Awards won by a single movie. It is tied with two other movies for that record, and those two other movies are actually already on this list. So why not include Ben-Hur and round it all out 
So we have all three movies that won the most Academy Awards ever. So that number is 11. 11 Academy Awards. And Ben-Hur won 11. Titanic won 11. And also The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. All of those are tied for first when it comes to Academy Awards. So why not have all three of them on there, round it out, get rid of source code, and replace it with Ben-Hur. Next is a movie called In Bruges, which is kind of a dark comedy. I liked it. I thought it was fun. It's got Colin Farrell and that other guy who's in stuff and things. I don't remember his name. But In Bruges, it was fun, but hardly would I call it essential. So we're going to remove In Bruges, and we're going to replace it with a movie called Wings. Now, Wings is the very first movie to win Best Picture at the Academy Awards, it's a silent film about two pilots in World War One. It's really good, and it's worth watching, and I would say that if you're any kind of movie buff or someone who really appreciates the film industry and movie watching, that you should watch Wings, because it's a landmark of its time, and I think it's a movie that still holds up. I really enjoyed it when I watched it. So, Wings is a movie that should be on this list, and it's not. So, now it is, in, in my mind. Next, we have Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead is another comedy, so I'm going to replace it with another movie that's quite funny, but I'm replacing it with another animated movie. Now, we already have some Disney representation on this list, so let's get a non-Disney animated film on there. So, I'm going to remove Shaun of the Dead, and I'm going to replace it with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, because I I think that it's a groundbreaking animated film. The blending of animation styles and the storytelling and the comedy and everything revolved around the making of this film. I think it came together perfectly and it's magnificent and it was critically well received. It was well received by audiences. I don't know anyone who has watched Into the Spider-Verse who has seen it and then said, no, I don't really like that movie. No, everyone likes this movie from what I know. Let's get rid of Shaun of the Dead and replace it with Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. And now I have one more. It's the last one, and then I'm going to start to wrap things up here. I feel like I've been talking for a while. So the last one on my list is Airplane. Now, Airplane is a comedy. It came out in, oh, eight ladies or early 90s. It's very funny, but I would not describe it as essential, so it's got to go. And unfortunately... I'm not replacing it with another comedy because we have we have a few on here. Mean Girls is on here, and I'm I'm not taking Mean Girls away because that's pretty funny. And there's some other ones on here. I'm not really seeing them on the list right now just because I'm not looking at it too closely. But there's comedies on here. We we've got enough. But there's another movie I would feel is essential for watching that is another sprawling epic. It's cinema at its finest I would say there when I was in my film program this was one of my teacher's favorite films and he would talk about it all the time to the point that I'm like okay like I'm I don't care about this movie but it is actually really good so we're gonna remove airplane and we're gonna replace it with Lawrence of Arabia and Lawrence of Arabia is the sprawling classic I'm actually gonna re-watch it tonight I've got a copy of it from the library and me and my wife are going to sit down. We're going to rewatch it tonight. And I'm actually very excited because I haven't seen it in a very long time. So rewatching Lawrence of Arabia. So maybe just having it on my mind because I'm about to watch it again is why I included it as part of my replacements. But I think that it is a staple of the film industry. I would describe it as an essential watch. So we're going to remove Airplane and we're going to put Lawrence of Arabia on there instead. And now I think we have a list that's looking a lot more essential and covers a lot more. We have a little bit more musicals now. We have some more animation now. We have some weaker movies off of the list and replaced it with things that I feel are a little more essential to watch. So I feel a lot better about this list now. <laughs> Not that I did actually change it. I still have it as is. Like it's staying here. Like I'm not going to cut out little pictures of these movies and replace it on the list like I'm not like that I just wanted to take a look at this list and see what could be done to improve upon it now I do want to do some more research I want to find out how the making of this list came to be so if that's something that you know 
I would love for you to reach out to me and let me know more about that. Also, if you have this list and if you've gone through it or if there's any of the movies that I mentioned that really stood out to you or anything that you want to watch, I would love for you to reach out to me again. Once again, I'll say if you go to the show's Instagram page, you can check out the picture that I posted just the other day where you can see the entire list with everything scratched off and we can talk more about this list and everything that it's got on it. So I would love to have a discussion about this with you. If you want to reach out, you can find me on Twitter at Poddle Nathan, and the show is on Instagram at Movies Are Awesome Podcast. If you haven't done so already, please feel free to subscribe to the show. You can do that on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and a whole bunch of other places. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode, and literally just me listing off movie after movie after movie. And it, maybe it was boring to listen to. If it is, I'm sorry about that. But thank you for sticking around this far into the episode. It does mean a lot to me. Next week, I have no idea what I'm going to be talking about next week. If you have a topic idea, send it my way. Maybe I'll maybe I'll take your recommendations. So feel free to reach out if you have anything like that. But until then, if you have nothing else to do, go watch more movies.